the lowest opponent average on the changeups in baseball this season. How about Kyle Gibson? 0.095 on a list of Hansel Robles, you got Gomber, Wandy Peralta, Max Scherzer as well, but certainly important because never too early to talk for the trade deadline, and that's one of the names we're focusing on right now, John. Kicking off first with Kyle Gibson. I said we were calling stay or go. What do you think, Gibson with the Rangers? Yeah, I, I think there's a good chance that he stays, but I, I like to see guys go. That's my job, to follow where they're going. So right. I, I'm going to say go for this one. Uh, I think the Blue Jays make sense. Ryu's obviously fantastic. Mats has been pretty good. Their starters are decent, but their offense is great. And I mean, we could see three teams make it from that AL East. And just a little more pitching for Toronto, and I see them possibly making the playoffs. Jays could definitely use another starter. Tanner Roark hasn't worked out. How about you, Dan? For me, he needs to go. I uh, signed three years, $28 million, so he's got value at the end of this year. You know, guys, he only strikes out 7.28 per nine, so he's a ground ball guy with a changeup. The Rangers, for me, aren't like next year competitive. They're years away from being competitive. They need to continue to replenish their upper level of talent, so I think he needs to go. I agree with John. Toronto would be a great fit. Mets, Yankees, Cubs. I mean, there are fits all over the board. It'll be interesting to see who can take on money mm. this year and even wants to take on money going forward. So looking to see the numbers right now for Gibson so far, 2.13 ERA, he's 4-0, the strikeout to walk ratio, 50 to 21, a one whip overall as well. Trevor Story for the Rockies, got to go, right? He's not signing a long-term deal. You know, this is a really interesting situation, and I, as I sit here today, I don't think he will go, and it's not because mm. of the reasons you may think. Yeah. It's there, there aren't many contending teams that actually need a shortstop. The Reds need a shortstop. I don't know if they're a contending team or not. I don't think they're going to take the money. Mm -hmm. Oakland absolutely needs a shortstop. He'd be a great fit there. And Billy will take, Billy and David, they'll take rentals and they'll give up prospects. I don't know if they can take the money there. Beyond that, Adnan, John, maybe you can find yeah. somebody. So he, he probably should go. I don't think so. And I think they take the compensation pay. No, you were first this time, and I think you got it right. I, I think if, if he does go, and Dan knows more about the situation than I do. I, I think it's not that likely that the ownership lets him be traded now. My guess on that, but the A's are the perfect fit at this point. They're clearly a contender. Uh, they're in it to win it. They've done it before. They traded with you, I think, was in it for holiday. Um, so I could see this uh, as a possibility. That's the best. The best chance, I think, for a story. And I do think Oakland has the talent to match up with some of the Rockies. Need. Oakland's got a really good player development system, mm -hmm. and I think they can match up. And that'll be a curious deal because he really does help the A's dramatically in their lineup composition and specifically in their defense. Their defense up the middle is yeah. not very good. He dramatically changes. Which is interesting because Chapman's actually having a down year offense. He's great defensively, but they lost Sammy and they lose they that. They got Lowry and Andrus up the middle defensively. And yeah. if you look at them defensively, they're not a great middle of diamond defensive team. He changes that dramatically. It's well said. Matt Olson, by the way, having a fantastic offensive season for the A's. Next day for us is Max Scherzer. So it's the final year of a contract, which has been universally lauded. Seven year, $210 million. Everyone knows they got their money's worth, won the World Series. He's won all these Cy Young Awards. But will Scherzer end up going? He's having a demonstrably better year, John, than last year. Last yep. year, at least by Scherzer's standards, three and a half year, right? Strikeouts were down. This year, he's been phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, I think the question is, do they think they can still win in 2019? They looked even worse and he didn't trade, so I think their M.O. is to keep guys, but like I said, uh, I like to see trades. This is one of those situations where you might trade him and then sign him back. Um, you know, St. Louis is the team that we've always liked to see Max Scherzer. Obviously, Michaelis is now injured. Flaherty may not be back till August. Uh, they clearly have a need there in the rotation. He's a St. Louis guy. They drafted him uh, first at a high school, I think 43rd round. Um, you know, right. I'd like to see that. I, I'm not saying it's likely. Don't nobody tweet me. I'm yeah. not saying it's going to happen, but I'd like to see St. Louis get. Traded. You know, to me, I don't think he gets traded, but for a different reason. You know, the Nats uh, don't have a player in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. This is their first player in the Hall of Fame. Now they have to resign him, which I do believe they will. Mm -hmm. And I think that takes on a bigger picture for an organization than just a transaction for talent. I think it represents your past and your future. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think he gets traded, but I don't think he gets traded because he truly represents what the Nats are and the history of what they are. 36 years old, maybe he gets another three, four year contract, depending on how long he wants to pitch. He skips himself a good See how he finishes up the year, but he's certainly capable of doing that because he's shown longevity. He makes adjustments every year. Mm -hmm. Incredible competitor.
Yeah, it's been amazing what a year he's had so far, especially coming off of the injuries and just the inconsistency of a season ago. Here's the one I think is fascinating. I'm going to Dan O'Dell on this one, which is Chris Bryant. Everyone kept saying in the offseason, all right, Cubs transition year, they might be able to sign one of Baez, Rizzo, or Bryant. Bryant's going to be the one to go. Numbers are down. No, no, now he's back. He's in the MVP conversation, and the Cubs are in first place. What do you do with Chris Bryant? No, he's not getting traded. There's no chance. And you think about it, John. All those teams <laughs> that yep. could have had Chris Bryant for, for quarters, maybe on the dollar, yep. got to be saying to myself, themselves right now, what are what were we thinking? Yep. <laughs> and I don't think so at all. He's he's playing like Chris Bryant. He's healthy. Yeah. And uh, I think they're going to stay in contention all year. They're going to be buyers at the deadlines, not sellers. Yeah, I mean, everybody was complaining that the Cubs were asking for too much. Turns out they were not asking for too much. He is back to being an MVP caliber player. And uh, I don't see them trading any of these guys. Um, I, I don't think they're going to be big buyers. They might do a little thing here or there. I don't see them spending a lot based on what's gone on with them the last six months. But uh, no way they trade Chris Bryant. I'll be shocked. Now, I wonder, though, is it the right decision? Meaning, Dan, right now there's a lack of starting pitching concerns there. So unless you feel like the Cubs can win the World Series, shouldn't you trade Bryant to get value moving forward? Well, I also think you have to look at reality of what players that are about to enter free agency really get you at the trading deadline. Right. And they might get some contributors back. I mm -hmm. don't know if they're going to get an impact guy back. Yeah. He's an impact guy. I may take my chances of re-signing him at the end of the year than letting him walk and not getting something back of the same impact talent that he is. Yeah, the players have done their part. I mean, it would really be a shame, in my opinion, for them to they're not going to do that. Now. I don't see that. They're not going to do no. that. No, I mean, they, these guys together, they won a World Series. They broke the curse. They got a shot. I mean, you're up there right now. They're at the top of the division. They, they could win just because on paper they don't look quite as good as the Dodgers or mm. a couple other teams. No reason they can't win. All right, so you think they're in the mix. You guys are believing both of them right now. How about the Baltimore Orioles and John Means? Now, Dan was talking about this earlier. Yeah. They've got these great core young players, yeah. a lot of position players, some good young prospects to make as well. But for a John Means, is that a guy you flip because you say, well, we're not contending in the next year or so. Let's get back a big haul. Or is he yeah. one of the guys that you build around? Uh, I would say blame me in part for this because I brought this up a while back yeah. and figured they were a few years away and he's got three more years to go. He doesn't have ten more years to go. Three after this and, you know, Theoretically, it makes sense. You don't see teams do this, though. So, I, you know, I'm going to be shocked if they do it. If they do, I'd like to see the Angels if they have what it takes to do it. Uh, he's obviously an excellent pitcher. I believe he's a true ace. Uh, you just don't see teams do that when you've got three years to go, no matter what the outlook is going forward. I can't really think of many any examples of where a guy's got three years to go and he's an ace and they trade him, but... You know, they're not going to be a contender next year. Are they going to be a contender the following year? They do have prospects. They've got Rutschman. They have a good outfield core, Mullins, that we talked about. But uh, I'll be surprised if he's traded. If they do trade him, you know, the Angels need pitch. You know, for me, absolutely no. I mean, at some point in time when you go through this massive rebuild and you finally develop an impact starting pitcher, mm -hmm. they not only shouldn't trade him, they should sign him long term. He's not a free agent until 2025. Right. They've got other great young starters. I talked about Rodriguez and Hall mm -hmm. coming. That forms the nucleus of a nice rotation for them. At some point in time, as you go through the rebuild, you go through to find players like this <laughs> in the rebuild. From a fan's perspective, you have to show some continuity in your product on the field or you're just going to be churning them year in and year out. And I don't believe this is a guy they should do that to. It's hard finding left-handed starting pitchers of this. There ilk. is logic to it, though. He's it is. more valuable yeah. for somebody else this year and certainly next year. I don't know about the third year, but there is some logic to it. But, I mean, Dan's run ball, a ball team. He knows better. And you're right. There aren't many aces that are developed, homegrown, and he certainly is one of those. But to your point, John, for training, he's going into his prime at 28. So maybe you say, you know what? These are the best years. We'll get a great haul back for oh him. Oh, my God. But yeah. he's obviously a very special player right now for Baltimore. And last one to talk about is Nelson Cruz. So should he stay or should he go? Disappointing season for Minnesota. Can still set home runs. This feels like a no-brainer to me. He's going to go somewhere. Minnesota's not yeah, going Yeah, believe it or not, too, he should be traded without yeah. a doubt. And the place he should go is the White Sox. Now, will the Twins end up trading him with the White Sox? I'm not sure Mercedes, the Yerminator, I don't yeah. think that's sustainable through the course oh, of the, the year. Yerminator, come on, Dan. So I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. John. He's I'm got his own sandwich. I'm Danny Downer here, but I do <laughs> believe that is a perfect fit for what they need in that lineup mm. because he's a professional at bat. He takes his walks. He hit home. 
He hits home run. He hits good pitching. He makes adjustments. He's got playoff experience. Mm -hmm. That's the best fit for me for him, and he should be traded. Uh, especially with Toy LaRusso right now, it's a win now mentality. They've got a great team, John. There's yeah, no I mean, I think they have a great team as is. If I'm them, I, I would look more at the outfield. When Eloy comes back, maybe he's a DH, depending on how he is feeling. Uh, so, you know, I, I would leave that spot open. To me, the Rays are the team that really could use an extra bat. So, um, but I'm, I'm with you guys. I, I do think that he should be dealt. And Minnesota's got a lot to deal. They've got Oof. Barrios, potentially, uh, Pineda. They've got, they've got guys to deal. Yeah. Andrew Simmons, they've Absolutely got a lot to deal. Absolutely, the free agent after the year. You know, and I looked at the Rays, too, John. It's just that, you know, the Rays' outfield depth is incredible, and Meadows is really settled in right now yeah. mm. as their DH. And I just didn't see the same fit because of all the other pieces they have. And then they've got those young infielders coming. So does Brandon Lau end up in the outfield? There's other guys that are currently in the infield end up playing in the outfield. So I just didn't see. Mm. I thought they'd load up more and more in the back end of their pen as much as they possibly can. Rays have used seven different players at DH. They have had a revolving door. There, but you're right. If Meadows is the guy, great. And for the White Sox, without Jimenez, you know, without Robert, imagine how much better that I lost Madrigal be. right now, too. Right. They lost a lot of players. You're off. Their pitching is fantastic, though. Yeah, Fant pitching. It's going to I love what you were talking about Bummer and Crochet and Hendrix's lights out. Kopech. They're fun to watch.